Okay, let's see if we can get Windows 95 working in DOSBox. This isn't just DOSBox, this is DOSBox X, which is very heavily enhanced and modified version of DOSBox. Um, if you want to follow along, links will be below for this tutorial and uh, DOSBox X. You have to find your own copy of Windows 95. So obviously we've downloaded DOSBox. It's right here. It's got an annoying name, but that's okay. I'm going to go into this zip file bin x64. I'm not going to worry about the SDL2. I'm just going to go with the normal release. I am going to select all of this and copy it. And then we're going to go back up. Yeah, we'll just uh, new folder. And I'm going to be really lazy and just go DB X. And paste that content into here. Okie dokie, let's just see if it fires up. Yeah, run anyway. Okay, it wants to know where to work in directories. That means it wants to know where like all these scripts and shaders and all this stuff is. Uh, usually it guesses it right first go, so I'm just going to go, yep, choose. And there we go. Seems to be functional. We're off to a good start. Now, <clears throat> going off this tutorial, there's a couple of things we're going to want to do. First is we're going to want to make a configuration file for DOSBox because it's gonna uh, set the memory size, so that's your RAM, we'll say 64 gig, video, and we have to change this, because I'm using Windows 95B, so I want DOS 7.1, uh, CPU is gonna be Pentium MMX, which is, I don't know, like Pentium 3 or something, Sound Blaster 16, it's, I think, your floppy drive, but I don't know. IDE, IDE. Rendering modes. So, this is straightforward enough. We're just going to copy this. And I'm going to come back to my DOSBox directory. And new text file and we want to call this for simplicity we're going to go win 95.cof conf yes I'm sure then we want to actually get this content into it so I'm just going to use notepad and change the DOS version 7.1 click file click save that should be good to go so to load up your config file in DOSBox there's two ways you can go about it and I'll just pull up yeah here DOSBox dash config and then the file name so what that means is if I go e slash whoops slash dbx no I didn't get that right we got the cd dbx the it's right there so DOS box X. It's going to use um, PowerShell syntax, but never mind. 
and then dash config and then the name in the config file yes yeah which is win nine five dot on so we'll turn that off that should work and there we go however there's also a way easier way you just click on main here and hit restart dustbox with config file and then just choose it but it's always handy knowing your command lines now now we have to make a virtual hard drive or a hard drive image because if you watch any of my other DOS videos I usually just load up a folder with all my DOS games in it but when you're trying to run a full operating system I don't like that it, it, it needs the hard drive information geometry or some crap I don't know petition data and all that and that's pretty straightforward we are this DOS box will do it for us your image make yeah img make name hdd dot img you can call it whatever you like dot img then um, we're going to use dash t because if we use dash t let's get the mouse back we can just use these pre-made images or templates I should say so I'm going to use the 2 gig template here which is uh, hd underscore 2 gig and that'll do now if this worked and you're going to watch it doesn't always work I've noticed but yeah good we've got a hard drive image right here in the DOSBox directory cool now we mount that now C drive is going to be a DBX in my case slash HDD and I've made a mistake dot img it's image mount c location of image dunsky next i'm gonna image mount and this is where you, your windows 95 um whatever media you have whether it's a cd or an iso slash image we're going to put that on the D drive. For me, it's going to be E slash. So if you actually have the physical CD, which I bet next to no one does, it's just your drive name, full path. So in my case, my CD drive, my little USB CD drive is K colon slash. But since we're using ISO images, it's going to be the full path to that, which is game slash DOS dash ISO slash windows 95b dot img that should do the trick what did I miss well oh, my bad my bad ISO not image there we go I'm gonna go over to the D drive I'm gonna format C I was skeptical that DOS seven point one could handle anything over i thought it could like only handle like 850 megs but look at that it's formatted to its full capacity uh anything else we need to do no we're pretty good let's see so we should be able to just go set up 
But there is one thing we're going to do before we do that. Get my browser back. There's a command here. I just want to copy. I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to copy the contents of the CD over to uh, our newly created Windows hard drive because the, the, the drawback with DOSBox X is once you get into the Windows operating system, these options here diminish. You can't just throw in and out images and disks like you want to. You lose all control here. So right now what you have mounted is what you're going to have mounted in Windows pretty much indefinitely. So in the beginning when you're setting up your installation, um, if you have a game or something and it updates DirectX let's say, and then it wants to Windows 95 CD, screwed because you can't pull out the game CD and put in a 95 CD. It doesn't matter if it's an image or disk, it's just not an option. So that's why we are going to do this. So with DOSBox X you can, uh, what am I looking for? Shared clipboard function. Pasting from clipboard, it's control F6. I'll just let that run. And really it's these cab files we want. So I hope I made that clear. With, with DOSBox, once you type in the commands to mount your drives you want to use, obviously you're going to mount the C drive because Windows is on that, and then whatever disks. Now, you can mount multiple disks, but um, that's not going to help you. Because once you've set them up and boot into Windows 95, that's it. That's what you're staying with for that whole session. Then you've got to restart DOSBox, remount whatever image you want to use for your CD or floppy disk or whatever. But I hope you understand what I mean. My motivation for this is I've got a handful of games that were in that DOS to Windows crossover transition period. You know, when Windows was still DOS based and hadn't gone over to NT yet. And they won't work directly in DOS. They still need Windows 95, even though it's basically just a glorified shell for DOS. But uh, I hope I can get them going again. Look forward to that. Okay, looking promising. Are we promise? Ooh, I need to turn down the mouse sensitivity, but anyway, yep, defaults are fine. I'm just going to go with compact and the fun bit. You need your license key. So, uh, I need to pull that up, huh? Hmm. 
And, um, well, I'm sure we all have ways of finding this. <coughs> Google. Should we go the other way? Yes, we do want a CD drive. Not going to worry about networking. You can get that working in DOSBox, but I haven't gone down that route because who am I going to network with? Who else is running Windows 95? Yeah, I'll just go with the default. And we're off to the races. This is running on spinning rust, but shouldn't take too long. So far, so good. So now we just want to see if this installs successfully and restarts DOSBox. Promising. Okay, now. Unfortunately, we have to reload that configuration file. So we're going to go main, we start DOSBox with config file, choose our Win95 conf. And do this again. And I nearly messed it up, it's IMG mount, and we want that for C. And I'm not going to worry about a CD right now, so now we type boot C colon, and fingers crossed. Not promising. Not promising at all. It killed DOSBox. Now, this is where I'm going to use the command because we might have to do this a few times. And the other thing I'm going to do is... Um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to use Google. I'm going to use my search bar. Image, mount, search bar. It's a URL bar. Got it. Anyway, C, E, Shift, Slash, Games. No, 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 no. It's just X, B, D, D. D B X slash H D D dot I N G. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to put that in the clipboard into memory because, like I said, we may have to do this a few times. All right, you can full screen this for now. Control F six. Boot C, press F8 really quickly after, straight after you press enter for that command. We're going to go into safe mode. Fine.
Oh, look at that. We found something. All right, we'll save it. Skip undo. Honestly, I do not miss the fat file system one little bit. Now, I'm going to go to the computer, right click, properties. Device manager, system, and plug and play BIOS. We are removing. Close that. We start, of course, that did not load to config when you do a plain restart, which is very annoying. There we go. <clears throat> Control F6. Boot C. Fingers crossed. Not promising. Not promising at all. And I believe it or not, there we go. Windows is still doing things here. What we're going to do is main. We're going to go down to reboot guest system. This is different to restart in the virtual machine. Because this keeps all our configuration. We don't have to type in a million bloody commands. It's actually only two commands, but. Please be doing something. Now, I may have to go outside and do a dance under the moon. We'll see. Well, no, I feel this is progress. I think this is progress. I'm going to call this progress. Yeah, this is progress. Probably doesn't matter, but we're out in the sticks and the land down the under. Don't care about a printer. And that's going to screw us up. Yep. Yep. Okay, and again, Control F6, again, boot C. Look at that.
We even have video drivers. No, I don't care about the monitor. That's fine. We'll keep 256 colors because that, um, it's going to keep our virtual memory low. Let's just check. See, we don't have a CD drive. That's because we didn't mount one. If we mount one, it'll come up. So, if we, um, when you start getting those kernel 386 errors, run it a couple of times, just normally, and then do the uh, reboot. Make sure it's reboot guest system, not reset virtual machine. I don't know why, but it makes a difference. And then finally, just, just for the sake of it, just to really make sure, so we're not giving people bad information. And we'll run that again. So as soon as you as soon as you've made this win.conf, you want to be using it each time you launch DOSBox. Doesn't matter if you do what I'm doing there or if you open DOSBox and then click restart with configuration file down here and choose it. Either way. Is as soon as you've made that, start using it. Then make your hard drive and then start doing your installs. But what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to control F6, but this time I will put the Windows 95 CD in there. Whoops on the D drive. And you can go nuts with this. You, you can mount any drive, like obviously don't do A and B because they're floppy drives. But unless you're loading a floppy disk image, skip A and B. But you know, C, D, E, F, and etc. Go nuts. Done boot C. And there you go, there's the Windows 95 CD. I have a feeling this stuff will have been stripped out. Yeah. I thought they were videos. But yeah, that's it, that's, that's Windows 95, so... And then from there you can uh, install whatever you want, I guess. Go nuts. I uh, hope you got the idea, got the gist of it. And as I said, links to Dothbox for that tutorial I used will be below. So, until next time. Peace.